You're going to watch this video. And you are going to see some painting. Painting! Painting! Welcome to another episode of Blaster Cated Painting. It is October, which means here on the channel we do Monster Month. And this month we're going to do a bunch of monsters and maybe some other stuff too. So, as you can see, got my Halloween shirt on. I am ready. Now, as you guys know, I don't paint a lot of games workshop stuff. I do buy some stuff because uh, I enjoy their miniatures. I just don't love their games so much, except for Warcry. Warcry's pretty good. But pretty much everything that I am doing this month for Monster Month is going to be for this game. Silver Bayonet by Joseph McCullough. It is published by Osprey Games. This game is awesome. If you don't know what this game is about, it is a game of Napoleonic Gothic horror. It's set in the Napoleonic Wars and there are goblins and vampires and werewolves and all sorts of nasty stuff going around. Now, there is no way I would have normally ever painted any Napoleonic soldiers, but this game got me looking at it and really wanting to do it. So, if you can find a game that broadens your horizons, you should try it and get into it. And that game for me is the Silver Bayonet. Something to know about Monster Month is mostly I do really easy paint jobs with like uh, Zenithal and speed paints and contrasts and little highlights here and there, but we try to make it as easy as possible for Monster Month. Plus, I just really want to play this game, so I want to get them on the table quick. So we're going to paint, uh, I don't know what her name is, Ivia Volga the Outcast. So we're going to paint that one. Let's go. So first thing we do is give her a spray of black and then we give her a Zenithal spray of white from above. And we're going to go to Cloud Burst Blue as our first color. And this is going all over her jacket. So as usual, check your reference material, check your photos online, all that stuff. But this is going all over the jacket. We're going to stay away from the fur and also the skirt. Next, we're going to take some gunner camo, and this is going to go all over her skirt. Now, she's got a lot of bats and a lot of flowing bits and stuff like that, so you do want to go through, move the miniature around a lot, because there are going to just be spots that you've missed, and just go in and fill them in. But it's going to happen. Next, we're taking some bony matter. This is going all over her hair and uh, the trim on her coat. So anywhere we have fur. And I will do two coats of this once it dries. Next, we're going to take some sand golem, some snake bite leather, and some pallid bone. So we're going to mix a little bit of sand golem and snake bite leather together to get the upper parts of her legs and the lower parts of her legs. Then, once that's been painted on, we're going to take that pallid bone and we're going to do just the middle parts of her legs and kind of wet blend those together. We are working off the reference material and trying to match it as close as we can easily. We're going to take some black lotus and some express medium and this is going all over the bats that she has. now. The Black Lotus has a little bit of blue in it. It's not just straight black. So this is gonna look really nice on those bats. And we're gonna take some blood red. I'm gonna put this on the scarf that she's wearing and also the sleeves of her shirt sticking out under her coat. Now, full warning about blood red, the speed paint. I have the speed paint 1.0 of this and it runs really easily and it's not that easy to control. I don't know if it's because of how smooth the Zenithal is from the airbrush, but anyway, it bleeds. Be careful with it. Just use Slaughter Red instead. I'm going to throw this bottle out because it's infuriating.
Next, we're going to take some wild wood here, and this is going on the uh, handle of her axe. And we're going to take some brownish decay. Now, this is going to go all over the tree stump that she's uh, hanging out on here on her base. You know, and just when you think, hey, Games Workshop didn't put a skull on here. No, they did. It's down on the base. Just paint it with some pallet bone and move on. Skulls everywhere. We're going to take some Mortarian Grime and we're going to put this on her face and her hands. Then, once that dries, we're going to take some Runa Gray and we're going to put that on her face and her hands as well. Next, we're going to take some Dwarven Gold and she's got a little bit of trim on her jacket here, this sort of golden trim part. So we're just going to put that on there. Then we're going to switch over to some heavy metal, and this is going all over her axe blade. Now we're going to take some ghost gray, and we're going to do a highlight up on all of her skin, so her face and her hands. And we don't need this to be every spot highlighted. It's going to be a little bit more subtle by the time it's done. Um, we're just bringing up a little bit more color there. She is dead, so we have to bring it up a little bit. And we're gonna take some Grave Lord Grey, and this is gonna go all over the silver that we just did for her axe. Now we're gonna take some brown mud from Vallejo. We're gonna put this all over the base, and we're also gonna put it over the ground parts of the base that she has here. So we're just gonna slather this on there. We're going to take some Agrellan Earth here, and we're just going to put little patches of this all over that brown mud. We can still do this while the brown mud is wet. And I got some rocks here. I'm just going to stick those right in. No need to glue them when that stuff is still wet. And then I'll take some brown mud and just put it around the sides of the rocks so they're not just sitting on top. We're going to take some somber gray and we're just going to hit her toenails and her fingernails with this. Now, once that base is dried, we're taking that Agrax Earthshade and this is going all over that base. And I got some flock here. I'm going to do some little patches of glue. And we're just going to stick that right in there and knock it all off, blow it all off. Take some wasteland tufts and just add a couple of here onto the base. Go back to that Agrath's Earthshade, put it back over that flock we just put down because it turned out to be a little too bright. Then we will put a black rim around the base and she is done. And here she is all finished up. I don't want to meet her in the woods like these Napoleonic soldiers here had done. She turned out really good. This is an easy paint job. Anyone can do. If you don't have an airbrush to do a Zenithal, just do Slap Chop. Same sort of idea. And here's another shot of her here facing off against this guy. Really fun. So say what you will about Games Workshop, but there's one thing that they do well, and it's usually vampires. Their vampire miniatures are always pretty cool. Except for the ones that came in that war cry set last time. I didn't, I was not a fan of those. But this, this one's cool. I like how she's a vampire but has a, a, an axe. Like for chopping down trees. She's just like a weird woodsman vampire. Like she wakes up at like dusk and she's like, Oh, I got a lot of work today. Gets her axe and punches in and whistles out to the, to the woodlot. It's, it's strange. Either way, thank you guys for watching. This was the first video for Monster Month, which is uh, a ton of fun for me. I really like doing this. Maybe I'll do more monsters throughout the year, but 
then maybe Monster Month won't feel so special. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all of the YouTube stuff, and you guys have a great day. Iva Volga. Iv, 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 Ivya. Ivya, Ivya Volga. Oh, I don't know how to say that, so. Butchering to commence. <laughs> oh, this is so dumb. Oh, I miss doing dumb stuff. Other than going to work like a chump.